ready for chatting with Charmaine? Well, here's your host, Charmaine Winter. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Women's History Month, Chatting with Charmaine. So good to see so many of you. Thanks for hopping on here. I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked, in fact, that I'm going to encourage you right now to go ahead and share this live with all of your closest followers and friends because I have three very, very powerful women who are going to be joining me tonight as my guests on this live. We are, first, I've got the amazing chef, Lynn Krieger. She's joining us from Louisiana. Uh, and then Dallas interior stylist, Charlotte Tu. She's going to turn that camera around. She's going to be showing us how she's living. Uh, we're going to have a game challenge tonight, you guys, as always. And after that, we will have an incredible musical talent, Lydia Caesar will close out the show. So have you shared the live already? Because you, you don't want to keep this just to yourself. All right, so tonight, I'm wondering about food. That's probably because I'm thinking about, you know, uh, all the delicious food that Chef Lynn um, is about to cook up for us. She's got food thoughts in my mind. Um, but, you know, we use food for everything, don't we, as people? I mean, besides the very obvious, we use food for nourishment. Um, we also often use food terms for as endearments. You know, have you got a honey? Have you got a sugar? In the South, they call you dumpling. Um, we also use food as metaphors. You know, it's a piece of cake. It's easy as pie or the very obvious one ever popular. When life gives you lemons, yeah, you know why I'm going to finish it out. We use food for bonding, right? Um, you know, it's an opportunity for meeting for coffee. Let's go to dinner. Want to grab a bite? We use food as a reason for exploring. Every time I hit a new town, that's the first thing I'm doing is I'm checking out the neighborhood. You know, where's a good spot to eat? Um, that's one of the first things that I always check out. I'm sure you do too. Why do we use food in so many different ways? Is it because food is super relatable? I think Chef Lynn, because I want to ask her, what's the most unusual food she's eaten? So Chef Lynn, Hi. how are you? Oh, doing great. I'm opening that bottle of wine you asked oh. for. Oh, girl. <laughs> you, you know, you Louisiana style. I, I, I got to wait till after the live for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold on to it for you. Yeah, absolutely enjoy for me. Chef Lynn, what's the most unusual food or meal you've ever eaten? Well, that's a loaded question when you're from Louisiana, right? I think sometimes not. you know what you're eating and sometimes you don't ask about what you're eating. You just say, thank you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, um, you know, I've definitely, I've eaten alligator. Nutria is something that people don't expect. Nutria is a rodent of unusual size. I've but never if, heard of that. I probably don't want to know. You said the R word, and that's enough for me. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so let me ask you, was it fried? And so, you know, it tastes like chicken? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. No, anything fried is going to be good. You batter it, you fry it, you give it a dipping sauce. It doesn't matter how weird it is. People eat it. Okay. All right. Well, you know, you you guys are all from the south, so I'm I'm learning. I'm, it's acquired for me. I am um north northern raised, <laughs> and as such, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so welcome to chatting with Charmaine. Thank you. I am thrilled to have you here. Now I see you got some greenery going on, and with the handle like roots and bulbs, right. what do I expect? 
And it looks like you've got something besides wine there. What you making for us tonight? I do, so tonight I, I am making cre uh, Creole Sicilian stuffed mini bell peppers for St. Joseph's Day, which is coming up very soon. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that Sicilian culture has helped shape New Orleans pretty much from the very beginning. So St. Joseph's Day, their patron saint, it's a huge deal here. It's usually after Mardi Gras. It's around the same time as St. Patrick's Day. And, you know, we love a reason to party with you. So why wouldn't we celebrate with you? Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. Even the saints are partying in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to let you get started with what you're doing there. You can certainly um, explain as you go along um, what you're doing and the ingredients you have. I'm seeing uh, quite a bit there, and, and it's hard for me to tell what. So I'll let you, you well, hold up whatever you're holding. So what I'm making is the stuffed peppers that I have some ready for you right here. Ooh. Love little stuff, mini peppers. And I'm doing mini peppers. Because the whole theme of the St. Joseph's altar I have behind me, you set this up for the day and everyone who comes to visit your house or your altar can grab a little bit of everything. So this isn't a big buffet. You want little bites of things. So what I've got are just some mini bell peppers that you pick up from the grocery store. And there's two ways you can cut these little boys in half to make them easy to stuff. You can either make a boat out of it. You leave the end on and just clean the inside out like that. Or if they're big enough, you can go ahead and cut them just completely in half without that end on. Okay. The filling I'm making is actually, it's technically vegetarian, though it doesn't have to be. Uh, right now we're in Lent, which is part of Mardi Gras. It's part of the Catholic holiday where you party into Mardi Gras. You repent for all, all the stuff God saw you doing on Mardi Gras day. <laughs> and then you behave, behave for 40 days. Part of that is giving up meat. Okay. So sometimes we'll eat seafood. What I like to do is I actually like to make mushroom stuffing in a pretty unique way that almost makes it taste like Italian sausage. So what I've got here, this is actually uh, mushrooms that I grated on a cheese grater okay. and then cooked them the wrong way. Like when you cook mushrooms, you're supposed to give them a lot of space and let them really breathe. This, you're smothering them in their own juices with the onions and seasonings that you would put in Italian sausage. And it's really creamy and meaty and just, oh, it makes the best filling. And it's it's mushrooms, it's meat free, yeah. Holy smokes, you're making me hungry. You know, that's the only problem with a live is that I'm not actually there to smell and taste and sample all of these goodies. That like, sounds amazing. <laughs> You know, your um, uh, Misty has joined us, and Misty is always is also from Louisiana. Um, okay. and, yeah, and so um, I bet you she's probably taking notes. Now, you guys, I did tell Chef Lynn because of the timing um, that I'm going to have her forego the, the you know the amount of ingredients and so forth. She's just going to announce mm -hmm. them. But if you want to know the details on so that you can make this, you're going to hop over to her page mm -hmm. and. Uh, she'll either have a recipe up for you or you can DM her and she'd be pleased to share. I'm going to have a full video up this Saturday. Okay. So step by step, full recipe. And there. actually, if we ask Misty, I bet she would call this probably like a dirty rice stuffing. Okay. Which if you've ever heard of dirty rice, that was a, a Louisiana dish using all of the left, like the liver and the kidneys after you butchered an animal. You chop it up real fine. You cook it down like I did the mushrooms. Mix it with cooked rice like I'm doing here. That's the traditional dirty rice kind of filling. And this is just the mushrooms instead. I love me some dirty yeah. rice. Well, there you go, baby. So let me ask you this. While, you, while you're mixing and combining ingredients there, um, yes, Charlotte, it absolutely looks delicious. Um, let me ask you, uh, what you have for breakfast this morning? Cookies. <laughs> Actually, I had these. these I got from Angelo Bricados. It's a third or fourth generation Italian family in New Orleans. They're, uh, these are fig cookies. This is almond spiced cookies, anise cookies, lemon ricotta, and the cannolis. This was my breakfast this morning with a really good espresso. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Always I'm not an hurting. espresso chaser will do it. Absolutely. Right. So, I mean, I had to say it before I showed you, right? Quality <laughs> <laughs> My show producer is all about having cookies for breakfast. <laughs> and that's not normally my breakfast. I'm normally a leftovers kind of girl. Like, give me some spaghetti 
in the morning. I'm happy. I, I love I love having dinner for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I do. You know, um, so so would you rather I know you're all about your vegetables. I've mm -hmm. you know, I so so in clarity to all the fans here, I actually um met Chef Lynn. Uh, while I was in Louisiana on the last visit, and uh, she did an amazing, um, well, an amazing bunch of stuff, but gumbo was one of them that we had, and uh, jambalaya uh, mm -hmm. was another prepared for us. And so um, I know she's all about the veggies. She's about getting them in there without them necessarily tasting like vegetables. Sandra, I know you said you were going to miss your meat, but I tell you, if Chef Lynn says you won't, you won't. Um, so if you had, would you rather walk around with a salad for your head or broccoli for your arms? Salad head. Wow. My head is already a mess. It might as well be a salad. <laughs> broccoli arms. I can't imagine what I would be like a T-Rex almost. <laughs> Actually, what I had for breakfast yesterday was a charred broccoli salad. That was my leftovers. There you go. I'm not a big broccoli fan, but you know, the other night, somebody introduced me to some amazing Brussels sprouts, which I would have swore ahead of this that mm -hmm. that is not my, my thing either. So what are you doing there now? So I'm stuffing the peppers. What I did here with our filling, I added some beaten egg, some azaghio cheese, which is a little saltier than Parmesan, so it's going to give you a little more punch to it. And between the egg, the cheese, and the cooked rice, this is going to be a really good binder. The peppers, I sprinkled with a little bit of salt to give them their own seasoning. So they're not just a watery little cup of soft vegetable. And now I'm stuffing them pretty tightly. I'm putting a little bit in and packing it down. And then I'll round it out with a little bit more like so. And once I've got them all filled, I'm going to top them with some breadcrumbs and more cheese. But this I mixed melted butter into. Ooh. So it's the texture of brown sugar right now. And oh, when that cooks in the see. oven, mm. golden brown. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All the good stuff. As much as Sicilian cooking will relies a lot on olive oil, once they came to New Orleans, they got that French taste for butter. End of story. Game over. Well, it, it sounds amazing and I bet it smells amazing now in those spices I know you sent me a, a, um, you you and I were communicating all day and you talked about the fact that you've got a lot of garlic in there so much garlic so much so okay. uh, most of what people know about New Orleans before they visit us is very French because they were the first people in charge they were the first people sending letters home but the Spanish had a, a hand in our colonization Sicilian African cooking all of those cultures use a whole lot of garlic in their cooking. Uh, you might call it your sofrito, your miso, your uh, mirepoix. We call it the holy trinity. Onions, celery, peppers, and garlic, garlic, garlic. How much garlic? All the garlic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My favorite garlic. feature is a whole whole oh, person. <laughs> and then with so what's a meal like this, you don't know how many people are coming over, so you better add extra for good luck. So there's a lot of garlic. In here, and then the sauce I actually am serving them with. I've gotten this little ramekin right here. This sauce, I cannot tell you because my aunt Phyllis would kill me if I did. This is a family secret right here. It's a riff on what we call a rumelot sauce, which is kind of like a tartar sauce that's been creoled up a lot with a lot of vinegar and cayenne and things like that. Maybe there's a little wish to share in there. Maybe there's some hot sauce, but I can't tell you which one. And there's definitely a lot of garlic powder in it. All right, so that begs the question, how'd you get so gosh darn skilled at your craft? Who who most inspired you and, and how'd you start? Mm -hmm. So I was the only granddaughter on both sides of very large Cajun Catholic families until I was 10 or 11 years old. And my great grandparents were alive on both sides until I was maybe 10. So they were living off the land, they had chickens and pigs and the whole nine yards. And I could very well be the one responsible for cleaning the chicken coop, or I could clean the chicken. And I chose the inside, in the air conditioning with a Coca-Cola classic, with my mama kind of situation. So I learned from my grandmothers. Um, I learned how to think about things from my mom who had a lot of jobs. So she kind of taught me how to open up the refrigerator and figure it out, so to speak. But that, that intuition of, I don't know, cook it till it's right. 
until it's enough kind of grandma stuff I got from my grandmother's and I know that uh, you're, you're really big on the outdoors as well mm -hmm. um, so what smells better freshly mowed grass or bread baking in the oven bread <laughs> bread hard always hard always <laughs> No matter what the question is, then bread can be the answer. That's my answer. <laughs> I remember um, that uh, meme that went around with Oprah for a while there where she was just saying, I love bread. And so many of us all agree with her. Oh, and if you don't agree, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Right. More for me. That's fine. Yeah. So um, th this is a question that um, may divide the universe i don't know but chefs okay. and cooks all over the place so is gumbo soup it can be it can be a soup it can be a stew uh, if i'm going to give you a definition of what gumbo is not what my gumbo is those are two very different answers ah. very it, those are two different questions really asking what gumbo is gumbo is a soup or a stew right the thing that's separates gumbo from every other soup or stew is the inclusion of one of three very specific thickeners. It started with African okra. Uh, the dish would have been pronounced king gumbo, which just means smothered okra stew. And if you smother okra the way you have to cook in Louisiana in the summer during okra season before air conditioning, you're mashing it up, putting it on the embers and just stirring every now and then. So all that juice that people incorrectly called slimy. They should say it's gooey, because mm. gooey is a food word. Mm. Um, mm. Girl, let me make it for you. I promise. Here's <laughs> <laughs> no, what happens. I that slime just loosen up. yeah. it loosens up, it cooks down, it caramelizes, it turns almost like a mahogany molasses color. It's rich, it's savory, it's sweet, it's ridiculous. And that's where we get the second thickener you can add to a soup, the flour French roux. The French would often send an African chef to France to train in royal kitchens, and then that African chef would come back and start approximating dishes, what we had versus what his French boss wanted. So that's one of the ways we get Louisiana Creole food, is using African or sometimes indigenous ingredients with a Frenchy, Frenchy, ha ha kind of flair to it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. You know, we're out of time. <gasps> I, um, what, what, are you all done? Have you, have you stuffed everything? Um, yeah. I know you showed us at the st start of the hour what it looks like in completion. So how close are you to completion? This, this, these only need to go in a hot oven for about 10, 12 minutes. Okay. The filling is completely cooked. Because they're small and people are picking them up, you still want the pepper to have a firm texture to it. So 450, 12 minutes, and they're ready to go. People can literally still pick them up, dip them, or top it, and pop it. All right, so let's pull that close to the camera for that money shot. Let's everybody can see that. Can we go a little higher? Uh, there we go. There we go. And, 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 yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Chef Lynn, thank you so much. They look delicious. Uh, I'm you. not going to try them because I I'd rather just come and have yours. And, and I'm going to take you up on your offer. I'll I'll be coming by to see you sooner than you think. Um, oh, I'm ready. All right, so I'm so glad that you're hanging out with us for the rest of the show. Yes. So um, please take the time to uh, go ahead and look, scroll through the comments because uh, some people have been saying some mighty nice things. You want to check those out before we close out the live. And right now, I'm going to welcome up my uh, very next guest, uh, Charlotte Tu. I'm inviting, I've sent you an invite up here. We want to see how you live in. There you are. Hey, Charlotte. Hi, Charmaine. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Does Chef Lynn know how to throw down or what? That's what he does. <laughs> Come find me, girl. I'll cook for you. <laughs> <laughs> she absolutely does. And you know, you're from da you're in Dallas, and I'm I'm a Dallas adjacent, and so we we like good food. We we come. Don't wait. Right. I'm speaking for you, Charlotte. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so, um, Charlotte, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? <sighs> Let me see. Um, seaweed? Okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know that that's so weird to me. Uh, would you eat it again? No. 
<laughs> okay. Um, I guess it wasn't a, it was a miss, right? Not a hit. It was a miss for exactly. you. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, enough said. Right. Um, <laughs> um, um, so, um, what are you going to show us tonight? I am going to give you a tour of my home tonight. Okay. Yes. Take it away. All right. Um, let me switch the camera. So, right now, I'm in the kitchen. Push this back. Oh, look at those glam chairs. <laughs> All like, right. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we actually closed on our home five years ago this month. So it's going to be our 50th anniversary. Uh, when we got the home, it was the browns were the theme at that time, the trend. So we haven't had a chance to renovate our home. I, I can't wait to renovate because I can't stand the brown right now. So what I've done to kind of improve the look is accessorize. As you can see, um, I have a lot of kitchen accessories. I love brass or rather gold. Um, so the theme color in my home is um, some ivory, gold, and the navy blue, because I love color. Um, so here we go. There's the kitchen. And then I'm going to move to the nook area, which is pretty much like our formal dining area as well. So this is where we always have all our meals. Sometimes we like to sit in, on the kitchen island, um, like having breakfast and stuff like that. Um, but then when you have like family coming over, we always like to um, have our meals from here. Um, and then here we do have our, f our living area, or rather family room. Um, so I'm a modern kind of contemporary girl. I love um, elegant pieces as well as I'm a minimalist. So when I design, even for my clients, they always request a lot of minimalists. And I also have a two-year-old baby, so I don't like to have a lot of stuff in the house. So, can you all, I mean, <laughs> Charlie, I just, I, I, I got to pause you right there. First of all, Sandra, I agree. I like, okay, loving everything. We've got Pat saying, oh, wow. Um, I know you can't see any of this, Charlotte. So slowly um, stand in the center, if you would, and slowly go around in a circle, because I know people just want to see this. My thing is, she just casually glossed over the fact that she got a two-year-old in the house. Does this look like a home where a two-year-old uh, is? I mean, there's no fingerprints on the glass, okay? <laughs> right, Chef Lynn? It's like, okay, well, yeah, I, I got a two-year-old. Okay, most people with a two-year-old's home doesn't look like this. Where have you got her or him locked up is my question. <laughs> So I had my husband take them to the park right now so I could have this live. But then usually I've trained them to know how to be neat. I'm, a, I'm an OCD. I can't stand, you know, an untidy home. So I just love neat homes, beautiful spaces, and all of that. I'm with you 100% sister. All right. <laughs> thank you so much for indulging me. Um, yes. Where else, where else are we going? If... All right. So I'm going to go to the master bedroom, which is right here. So the theme here is um, black, white and gold my favorite colors um so here i love glass um and then we have the wall frame up there the the, the king size bed in the shade of black um i usually have a zawadi pillow collection zawadi is the name of my company so these are custom made pillows um and then a throw right there nice abstract rug that's my working space area that's why i always do all my work if i'm working at home and then the TV mounted on there. And then when I do wall frames or wall decor, I like to put stuff that are inspirational. So like, if I ever feel like I don't want to do something, I always remind myself, hey, no, ex no excuses, right? I and then my workout. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> and then here I remind myself that I'm an entrepreneur. So it says a person who is up late working 100 hours for themselves to avoid working 40 hours for, for someone else. So I just like to put stuff that inspire me so I can just keep going. So pretty much that's our master bedroom. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, I think some of the comments coming through here says it all. Um, <laughs> if, if you want to go through again one more time for sure. anyone who might have missed some of it but we've got a comment coming through here from uh, maverick saying beautiful home uh -huh. uh, and you know just a lot of positives it's absolutely gorgeous and hard to believe you have such a young toddler in your home <laughs> no you you're all about family I, and this is this is how you guys live because you also have an older child right i sure do a 12 year old yes mm -hmm. Two more. 
<laughs> Absolutely um, stunning. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much, um, Charlotte, for sharing your home with mm -hmm. us. I've enjoyed this tour. Um, and, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, show us your sense of beautiful. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm um, going to take a look to see if, oh, and there she is. Uh, I'm inviting up our final guest of the night. Um, we had a replacement singer um, hop on and she has just been stellar. Um, so I sent an invite to the wonderful Lydia Caesar. Lydia, I'm hoping you're able to uh, see that invite. I know, oh, she might. we might be a little bit early for her because I know that she had had um, another commitment um, that uh, she wouldn't be in place. So let's chat a little bit um, before she accepts that. Uh, so, you know, I noticed that you you had that gorgeous blue um, throughout your main space, Charlotte, and I, I, you know, it's navy, I call it royal, I just found that it had so much personality in there, and wow, what, what about it do you love so much? So we've lost your audio. Let's see, are you, can you, can you, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, so I love color. I like, um, I feel like blue stands out, bold, you know? It doesn't, I don't have to do too much. And it can blend in with whatever color you're working with. So, yes. Wonderful. So it looks like Lydia is here, and here you are. Hey, Lydia. Hi. Welcome to Chatting with hey. Charlene. Hey. I, How I are see, you? I'm fantastic. I can see from your background that you, too, are a lady who loves color and flowers. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, then we've got the perfect uh, group tonight. And you guys were powerhouses. And I'm so grateful to have you here for um, my first show for Women's History Month. So uh, thank you for joining us. Um, and so I was sharing with everyone that we did have another uh, singer scheduled. And uh, she wound up with laryngitis. And so Lydia graciously agreed to step in at the last minute. And man, you're in for a treat because... Is she amazing? Oh. You're going to get to discover that a little bit later. Thank because, you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I No lie here. You're going to get to discover more so a little bit later because right now we're going into the game challenge. Um, I'm going to ask you, Lynn, to see if you can turn the camera a little bit or shift because we want to get to full face so we know. There we go. Perfect. All right. So tonight's game challenge Um is one I hope you're all up for. So everyone knows uh, the game challenge is not revealed to any of my guests. These are brave ladies here who come up, come on. <laughs> Tonight's game challenge we're calling um, Famous Families, okay? So I am going to give you some clues and I need you, whoever is first, just raise your hand. I'm, I'm asking my show producer to watch the bottom two, and I'll watch the top two, and whoever is first. Or maybe just maybe uh, call out. That way I don't have to pick, divide my eye into four. Um, but I'm going to give you some clues for some pretty famous families. And I want you to tell me something. Um, it might be their last name. It may be uh, what they're, you know why they're famous, where they're famous from, so but it'll be abundantly clear. So we're going to start out really easy. Um, make it easy on you. This family is on television, and this famous family uh, is comprised of Maggie, Lisa. All right. Let's, all right. Go ahead, Lynn. Simpsons. You got it. Yes. That's a hard two. Uh, you, well, you never know where I'm going with this. So, you know, remember, you, you just never know. All right? That was right. good. I'm thinking of, I'm like the Kardashians. <laughs> um, oh, I have two kids in different decades. Two 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 I know all the cartoons. Okay. The okay. Simpsons, okay. Okay, because I know all you ladies, not only are you powerful in your own right, but y'all have families going on, too. Yeah. So, you know, have to make sure. So um, we've got, uh, this is a television family again as well. We've got Alan Harper. We've got Jake Harper. And Charlie Harper. 
so you know, the Chatting with Charmaine audience, they are so amazing, these viewers. Sometimes they'll help you out by putting something in the comments. So, you know, if you are going drawing a complete blank, you can always use the oh, wow. line. Somebody was said it the, your breakfast. The Charlie Sheen show. Sheen show. Two and a half. Was it two, two and a half men? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So which one of you no. was claiming that you got that? Cause you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, so you know, you, you if you if you totally blank, my audience, my viewers usually play along and help out too. Good. All right. <laughs> Point goes to Lydia, I think. I think that one. No, was it wasn't me. It was me. Okay. Okay, Charlotte. Charlotte. I okay. Taking that point. Okay. Too. All right. All right. So you guys got to get on it here now. Now we got like Hakeem, Jamal, Lucius, Andre, Cookie. Oh, oh, oh that show, um, um, Empire. Okay, but but we had a the lions, the you. lions family, the lions family. <laughs> I love that you are so intense. But you know what, Lydia? Lynn actually put her hand up ahead of you. <laughs> you really you get shouted out. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. All right, all right. You just go there. So, so we, I did say that. So we're gonna go. I'm competitive, but I also like when everyone wins. Points, I'm fine with Lynn, everyone getting a point. Points to Lynn and to Lydia. Okay. Okay. All right, don't be so polite for Charlotte. The elves have it here, okay? Oh, okay. All right. So this family has is comprised of the Lovegood, the Dumbledores, the Weasleys. Come on. Oh, Harry Potter. Yes, Lynn got it. Lynn, <laughs> Lynn, you are on fire. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Here we go. In case I'm asking you, um, you know, just you're just not into that. So we got Kevin, Peter, Buzz, Megan, Lenny, and this is a old school movie. Boy, was this good. Maybe you know Kevin by another name. Maybe if I oh. were to yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Lydia. Is it Home Alone? Home Alone, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the family name, do we know the family name? I no. didn't know. Oh, the McAllisters. McAllisters. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Did she okay, you guys, now point you hold up. Point goes, the point goes to Lydia with that one. All right, okay. So we have here, we, we have, come on, get in the game, Charlotte. We've got, um, Jack and Diane, Rainbow, Dre, Andre, Zoe. Uh, oh, wait, Blackie? Yeah! yeah! What's their name? What's that, Charlotte? What's their you name? Huh? Do you know the family name, Charlotte? Um, For extra point. Uh, <laughs> I, no, I can't remember Is it. That Everybody know their name, the family name? Um, That's the Johnsons. Yes. Oh, God. That's right. I knew that. Johnson. I did know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Um, We got a few more here. We've got, oh, dear. All right. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going in here. Uh, The Starks. Mm -hmm. Oh, Game of Thrones. Wow. Thank you. Oh, for, thank I'm you. just taking all the nerd points. points. All of them. Give you all, all the nerd points. I watched the series four times. How? <laughs> How could I let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> that went to Lynn. That point went to Lynn. Lynn, you're you're, you're on it, lady, because I'm, like I didn't want to pronounce the rest of them. Okay. I, I don't even watch a lot of TV. I don't know where to that's, 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 that's a movie right there. So we've got uh, this family. We this family is a little bit interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna tell you because only two of the people I mentioned share the same name. So just so you know, all right, <laughs> Lydia, you got your fans on here. <laughs> I saw, I saw that. I was like, not somebody <laughs> quoting my lyrics. I love that. People are, uh, people are um, definitely cheering you on. Okay, here we go because this game is heating up. We've got uh, Peter, Alicia, Eli. Hmm. Kalindra, Kalinda. Mm -mm. How about if I told you Alicia's last name? Would that help you if her last name was Florick? Hmm. And Peter Florick? No, 
I don't know them. Huh? How about Eli Gold? Do you know him? Okay. Come on, <laughs> help them out, viewers. These people, these ladies are stumped. I believe I stumped them. All right. So it looks like this one. It's going. It's going. It's gone. Well, this is the good wife. Oh, no, nope. not resonating with anybody. All right. Okay. Nobody had a clue. All right. That was a good one then. Okay. We got uh, it. Thing. No mess. Morticia. Fester. The, the Adams family. <laughs> yeah. That's my last. I was about to say name Wednesday. <laughs> well, my my stage name is Lydia Caesar, but my new last name is Adams. So. We've been the Adams family for Halloween a few times. Oh, <laughs> <what is that? laughs> I'm loving that. I'm loving that. Okay. Haley, Phil, Gloria, Alex, Dumphy. They're also, they got some close fam called the Pritchetts. Pritchards. Modern family. Pritchetts. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. And the Tuckers, modern family. All right. This family. Family only <laughs> has two characters that I'm going to mention. Tony Car oh. Carmela. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um. Come on, Sicilian lady. Come on. I know. Well, I know the show. I don't know the family name, though. Right. The show is with the if I told you too much, I'd have to kill you. You know, the Sopranos is the Sopranos is the family name, ma'am. <laughs> the Sopranos. She said, I know the show, I just don't know the family. <laughs> 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 that was Lydia. <laughs> both Lydia both. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the uh, wait a minute. So, how we doing here? Uh, how we doing, show producer? Because we're out of time. Okay, we have the winner, Louisiana in the house. Liz, you, you got five. Wow, and Lydia, I know. Uh, where are you in the world here? I'm in Atlanta. You're, you're, Atlanta. you're in Atlanta. You came in with four. If we had had a tie, so close. I so. had the tiebreaker because i'm pretty sure nobody knows this family uh, you guys were stumped on uh, you know the good wife which i thought you wouldn't be well thank you so much for playing along um <laughs> you never know how a game's gonna go you guys were amazing kept it um riveting and spirited um i'm so happy that you ladies joined me at, here tonight to kick off women's history month um so without further ado I'm going to formally introduce you to tonight's uh, musical talent, uh, Lydia Caesar. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Lydia Caesar, who is joining us most recently from Atlanta. I have, um, as I mentioned, she's a last minute fill, up, fill in. So I have just been trying to play catch up all day. This yeah. lady has so much talent. I'm so honored to have her guest here tonight, as you will too. Um, Lydia, how'd you get into music? Well, um, like so many other people, I started at a young age in church. I'm a PK, so yeah. that means a preacher's kid. My dad is a pastor. So I was kind of born in the pews and born um, in ministry and singing in the pulpit since I was really young. And uh, so I've never really had like stage fright or like fear like that just because I was kind of thrust into the, into the spotlight. So I would say that's probably the beginning how I got my roots. How amazing. And yeah. so what would you say is your favorite album or song? I'm going to go ahead and say of all time. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that you. Okay. Do I have um, two that I would say. The first one I would say is Never Say Never by Brandy. Pretty solid. I'm a really huge Brandy fan. Um, and I would also say the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Which, <laughs> now, I, I, I love that. I love I'm not that. alone. You know, kind of cliche, but it's an amazing album. Um, so if I had to choose, like, you know, I have to listen to something. I mean, there's so many more, like Michael Jackson. Bad is another one that's, like, really up there. Um, yeah. And so what you guys are going to find, because I know once we throw her contact, 
in the comments. Y'all are going to want to hop over to her page and to her feed. What you're going to find is this lady is not only an amazing talent in terms of singing, which uh, you're going to hear in a few minutes so you can judge for yourself, but boy, does she have another talent and another skill, the art of songwriting. But she does it in such a unique way. Um, she has taken many very popular songs, even the most recent uh, um, Beyonce masterpiece uh, country song, and she's reformatted them <laughs> with her own <laughs> words. Yes. And y'all got to hear her talk about laundry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> to the tune of Texas Hold'em. It's okay, so funny. It, I... is, it is. And she acts it out, too. So you're, you're not going to want to miss it. You're going to want to head over to Miss Caesar's um, page here on Instagram for at least a laugh, but more than likely, you're going to just love it <laughs> and Thank be amazed so with the talent. <laughs> yeah, so, so they're just my mommy parodies. I call them mommy mixes, and they're songs that, like, moms and women can relate to. You know, I just do it based on things that I stuff that I can't stand, right? Stuff that irks me or, you know, stuff that I just go through as a mom and a wife and um, just remake these songs. And it's been fun and really growing my following and people seem to really, it connects me with a lot of new people, which that's the most, that's the best part. And it's therapeutic for me. It's like, I get to like, <laughs> just like bear it all and everybody and can highly, relate to it. Like, I love and that. And highly relatable and highly entertaining to yeah. all us fans. Yeah. So, you know, and so without further ado, I see you there, Coach Hada. Thanks for hopping on. I'm so glad you made it. Um, uh, I know the next question people are gonna wanna know is, hey, how can we get more? So how can fans support you? Where can they hear more um, Lydia Caesar? Yeah. How can, how can we find you? So tell us all that now. Yeah, so um, I'm on all streaming platforms. I have three albums out of actual original music. So you can find my album, my debut album, Caesar. My sophomore album is called Queen of Hearts. And the la my latest one is called Legendary Love. And I'm going to be singing a song off of the Legendary Love EP actually on here with you guys tonight. So just search Lydia Caesar on all streaming platforms and you'll find my music. Um, right here on Instagram, I'm Miss Caesar, so you can follow me here. I have a website, everythinglydia.com, which you can sign up. As soon as you get there, the first, the landing page, you can put in your email so you could be a part of my newsletter, which I don't spam. It's like every so often when something important is coming up, like a new show or new music, I'll send emails about that. And those are the best ways to stay connected to everything Lydia. Oh, I'm also on TikTok. Really big on TikTok. TikTok is everything Lydia as well. All right. I kind of want to make my Instagram everything Lydia too, but I've been Miss Caesar for so long. It's like, I feel like nervous to change it. So we just, we're ev Miss Caesar here, everything Lydia everywhere else. Okay. All right. So what are you performing for us tonight? So I am, I'm going to just lift this tripod so I can stand up better. Be best practices is to stand and sing. So I'm going to be singing a song that's called uh, The Ones We Love. It's off of my EP called Legendary Love. And the song basically talks about how we get lackadaisical with wow. people that we love. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. that, that you know, in the beginning, we're always like dotting our I's and crossing our T's. And then things just start to slowly fade. And uh, people start to get lazy about their love. And so that's what the song it just talks about. Okay, quickly, before you start, we have a question here. They want to know what's your stage name. Is it just Lydia Caesar? Yep, so I was born Lydia Caesar. That's my my maiden name. And um, I just kept it as my stage name. So Lydia Caesar everywhere, C-A-E-S-A-R. All right. Hey, O'Neill, so glad you hopped on. All uh, right. How's my connection? Is it good? I can hear you re really well. Good. Okay, great. Okay, so whenever... Whenever you're ready, I'm waiting on you. Okay, let's do it. I have a mic. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear the music? Yes. I met you on a Sunday and we fell. We fell deep in love, deep, deep. 
deep, deep, deep in love. You promised me that one day we made vows to kids in a house. You said that I was the one. But these days, things have changed. Yeah, ain't no guarantees. You don't value me. You don't care no more. You don't hold the doors. I'm tired. So I play. I played up shame games. I don't do the things that I used to do when I felt for you. I y'all be the way we are, the way we are, yeah. Why y'all be the way we are, the way we are, with the ones we love, with the ones we love, ooh, ooh, ooh. with the ones we love, with the ones we love, ooh. Ooh, ooh, with the ones we love, never thought we'd lose our passion. You're so predictable, you don't ever even try. We used to be the ones that everyone admired. Before we lost the fire, I used to be your everything but these things have changed yeah ain't no guarantees you don't value me you don't care no more you don't hold the door outside so i play i play the same games i don't do the things that i used to do when I fell for you, I y'all be the way we are, the way we are, yeah. Why y'all be the way we are, the way we are, with the ones we love, with the ones we love, ooh, 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 with the ones we love, with the ones we love, yeah. You're taking me for granted Like tomorrow's promise Baby, all we have this day Dear God, please forgive us We have each other But we throw one up away I'm so tired of giving half Instead of all of me And I deserve the same for you So baby, what are we gonna do? The way we are, the way we are. Why are we the way we are, the way we are, with the ones we love, with the ones we love, ooh, ooh, ooh. with the ones we love, with the ones we love, ooh, ooh, ooh. with the ones we love. Thank you, thank you. Fire! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Oh my goodness. I, I knew I wouldn't be disappointed <laughs> that I was overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, it has been a, my absolute delight. Um, and so I, I want to give you a few moments and encourage you to please scroll through these comments because they go away as soon as I shut this live down. And but so um, I can't, I don't know what happened. My, my comments froze like just a long go ahead time and ago. scroll it. It, it. Okay. Well, you've got, you know, everyone's just loving the vibrato. They're loving your lyrics, the oh, sound, you've moved people. You. Those are the comments that are coming through. And of course they're commenting on our beauty. And we all know we're stunning. We got, we got this. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate the love. I wish I could see, I don't know why my comments like froze a long time ago. I can't see like any, like no new comments are coming through, but you know, the internet be internetting sometimes. Well, so. you know, but at least we heard you, which was yeah. the important part. Right. That's, a, that's the most important. 
Yes. And so um, we've got comments coming through here about it being amazing and relatable. They love the lyrics. Um, Yay, and so, thank you, guys. You thank go, you so girl, much. from Lou. Okay. So I know who Lou is, but Lou knew. And Lorraine Copeland is saying beautiful voice. I mean, it's, it's coming at you. All, all this love is coming at you. So I wanted you. you to at least be able to hear that. As I said, it goes as soon as I close out this live. But it's that time. Yeah. And so thank you to Chef Lynn. To Charlotte Cook, and to the wonderful Lydia Caesar. Thank you all. And you viewers. We couldn't do this without you. Yes, thank you. I'm Charmaine Winter. Bye, guys. And Bye. I want to thank you for joining me. I'll be back next week with three new guests. One new game challenge. So don't forget to follow me here. Meet me there. Save, like, and share. Bye, guys. Thank Thanks. Send me some messages. I'd love to meet all of you. <laughs>